Hello and welcome to my simplified guide on killing Raksha. Raksha was released in December 7th of 2020. It is currently one of the most difficult solo bosses in the game. It is currently located in Southeast Anachronia and it has nerfs that are potentially coming to the boss later this year. For the requirements, you need to complete the Raksha mini quest. You need to have 90 or higher ranged gear, overloads 96 or better summoning, and then 99 combat stats. It is possible to do it with less than this, but I think it will be very, very difficult. Here is an example loadout for Raksha. In the main inventory, you would have an overload, a shield to switch to, prayer potions or super restores, sardom and bruise, and food. On your character, your character would wear general ranged gear and a tier 90 or 92 ranged weapon, a ring of death so that death costs get cheaper, especially when you're learning, and then you'd use onyx back criminal bolts ease if you use a crossbow of any kind so that you can heal up as you fight without eating. Finally, your familiar, which would preferably be a pack hack or a mammoth, would have as much food as you could possibly take. In this case, we're using sailfish. One of the reasons Raksha is actually one of the hardest bosses to solo is actually it has a lot of basic mechanics. It can actually attack in all three combat styles as an auto attack. It has a tail swipe or a charge attack. It has a shadow bomb or shadow bomb barrage attack. It has a shadow energy attack. And finally, it can spawn shadow pools as an attack as well. Here's an example of each of the attack styles Raksha will actually do. With the ranged attack, Raksha will lean down and then attack your character with a bunch of spikes coming from his tail. You want to quickly pray range before the spikes hit you. For the magic attack, Raksha will lean up, actually, and then shoot a purple orb at your character. You'll want to switch to magic before the purple orb hits you. And the hardest one to see is actually the melee attack. When Raksha leans up, you will lean back down and then you'll get hit by a melee attack. My suggestion is pray melee until you see Raksha do a ranged or a magic attack and then switch to ranged or magic to defend against it and then switch back to melee. Raksha will never melee twice in a row, but he can range or magic twice in a row. Raksha will not be able to melee you if you are out of melee distance at the time. For the tail swipe attack, you should actually keep your mouse behind your character ready to make your character move away from Raksha when the attack starts. I do not recommend having your mouse somewhere else because your character may not be able to move in time to avoid the attack otherwise. Escape is also a reasonable option here as well to get away from the tail swipe. At the time Raksha is going to tail swipe, if you are already out of melee distance, Raksha will choose to instead roar and then charge at you. The only way to avoid getting hit here is to either use a defensive ability like Resonance to take no damage from the hit, or to dodge the charge by either walking out of the way or surging out of the way. If you get hit by this attack or the tail swipe, you're going to take between 6,000 and 8,000 damage and then have your prayers disabled for the next few seconds. The best way to deal with this attack is actually to resonance the next auto attack you get if you survive because that will be usable as soon as the attack is about to hit you. It is also possible to eat through it, but that will be much more dangerous and potentially might result in a death. The shadow bombs will actually stun your character just before they appear, so you have two options. You can either anticipate a couple auto attacks before the shadow bombs appear, or you can freedom just after you get stunned. Either way, after the shadow bomb marking appears, you want to run at least three squares away from where your character was before, 
in order to not to get hit by the shadow bomb and in order to not lose your prayer as well. For the shadow barrage, you basically treat it like the shadow bomb, except you keep running until all of the shadow bombs have been placed, and then make sure that you do not run back into any of the smoke. With the shadow energy attack, you should click on all the orbs near you. Any shadow orbs that do not get clicked quickly enough will do about 2500 damage to you. You'll get more of these if Raksha was able to absorb a lot of pools earlier in the fight. The shadow pools actually don't necessarily do any damage to you unless they spawn on top of you. However, you will want to kill them later on at some point. To kill the shadow pools, I recommend using a normal ability if there's only a group of one. If there's a group of two or three, use the ricochet ability. And if there's a group larger than that, use the corruption shot ability. For the shadow explosion, you want to pray magic and then devotion and then kill any pools that are still alive. If there are no pools that are present on the field at the time, then devotion a little bit later, just before the first explosion happens. And then you want to resonance the last explosion for a very easy heal of about 5,000. After the explosion is a good time to go and set up a death swiftness rotation to continue your DPS. Now that we have finished going through the basic mechanics, now it's time to actually do the fight. For phases 1, 2, and 3, Raksha is actually going to do 4 auto attacks and then 1 special attack. We're going to start with the first phase. On the first phase, there's going to be 4 auto attacks, a tail swipe, and also a shadow pool spawn, 4 auto attacks, 1 shadow bomb, and then we're going to repeat this once, and then after the second shadow bomb, Raksha is going to do the shadow explosions. On this phase, I recommend just attacking the boss as much as you can and dealing with the mechanics appropriately. But on the second shadow bomb you get, run around and clear all of the shadow pools. Take as much time as you need before the first shadow explosions happen because that's when Raksha is going to absorb the shadow pools and get enraged. Damage Raksha all the way to 600,000 in order to phase Raksha into phase 2. When you start phase 2, watch out for all the rocks that are going to land on the ground. You're going to see a small shadow and then almost instantly after there's going to be a rock that falls and if your character is under that rock you're going to take between 2 and 7,000 damage. My recommendation is to eat up or use some defensive abilities or use disruption shield to help protect yourself against any of these rocks that fall. Also, do keep moving and keep going preferably in a straight line in order to minimize your chance of getting rocked. When you start the second phase, I highly recommend taking some time and clearing all of the shadow pools that spawn at the beginning of the second phase. Then continue dealing with the mechanics as usual. On the second phase, Raksha is going to do 4 auto attacks and then going to do the shadow energy followed by another 4 auto attacks, followed by the tail swipe or the charge attack, followed by 4 auto attacks, followed by the shadow bomb barrage, followed by 4 auto attacks, followed by the tail swipe or the charge, and then another 4 auto attacks, and then there's going to be the shadow explosions, and then finally another 4 auto attacks. My recommendation is to clear the pools during the time you get the shadow bomb barrage. The Shadow Bomb Barrage is going to happen for a while, and then there's going to be another 4 auto attacks, which means you should have a decent amount of time to clear all of the pools before you have to worry about the charge or the tail swipe. Again, damage Raksha all the way to 400,000 in order to move on to phase 3. As you do this, if Raksha is getting very close to 400,000, take your time and clear all the pools before you move into the next phase. Because in the next phase, Raksha is very liable to heal from these pools as well as do additional damage and some other things that make your fight a lot harder. During the phase transition between 2 and 3, 
there's going to be a lot of rocks falling again. You want to continue to move and kill any pulls you can easily get rid of without spending too much time in the same place. If you get hit by a rock, just eat up or use defensives or anything else to make sure that you stay alive during this period of time. During phase 3, there will be 4 auto attacks, the shadow energy attack we mentioned earlier, 4 auto attacks, the shadow bomb barrage we mentioned earlier, and then 4 auto attacks, and then the tail sweep or charge attack we mentioned earlier. For phase 3, it is very important that you clear as many of these shadow pools as you can. In my opinion, you should basically run around the whole arena if you can't do the whole phase quickly and clear all the shadow pools you'll see. When Rockstar gets closer to lower health, you can quickly use a few abilities and get Rockstar to 200,000 HP and immediately end the phase. But until Rockstar gets close to 200,000 HP, focus on clearing as many of the pools as you see. Throughout phase 3, keep running around the arena as you'll be able to prevent any of the smaller dinosaurs from actually doing any damage to you. You will all be stopped once in a while because of either the Shadow Bomb Barrage in which you can free them, or the Shadow Energy in which you quickly click all of them and then continue running. If you do this well, you'll actually take minimal amounts of auto attack damage from the small dinosaurs and you should be able to keep a good handle on the amount of pulls there are. You won't be able to death swiftness using the strategy though, so watch out. Keep in mind that even if Raksha is very close to 200,000 HP, he can heal up and then you may have to deal extra damage. However, if there's a lot of pulls around at the time, you may actually have to go and clear a bunch of the pools out before you try to get Raksha back down to 200,000 HP. When you reach 200,000 HP, Raksha will finally move on to phase 4. You're actually going to be changing areas from this main area into the area that's actually just outside the instances you start. So, Raksha will not move during this phase and is going to do a special attack after two auto attacks every single time. If you're in melee distance, Raksha is going to go and use the Tail Swipe attack. However, if you're out of melee distance, Raksha is going to Shadow Bomb. It is highly recommended to stay in melee distance at this phase because you can consistently just walk two squares out of the sh Tail Swipe, but you cannot consistently deal with the Shadow Bomb in any safe way. Every once in a while, instead of doing a Tail Swipe or Shadow Bomb, Raksha is instead going to go and put up a shell that you can do a bunch of damage to to break. If you don't break the shell, Raksha is going to launch his instant kill attack. You can break the shell to prevent this, or you can actually hide behind one of the posts, like in this clip, and you will be able to save yourself from the instant kill. After this attack, continue on hitting the boss and dealing with the two auto attacks and special attack until you kill the boss. If you want to play this phase really safe, just keep eating every time you take a lot of damage. Make sure you stay above 8000 health so that if you mess up the tail swipe you are not going to be instantly killed. You also want to continue to watch out for the instant kill attack which will happen every once in a while as, but you can take as long as you need to finish the boss fight. If you can kill the shell then there's going to be large amounts of these blue anima crystals that will be scattered throughout the fight. You can pick up a bunch of them and then activate them to get a very big DPS boost which can help you quickly get the fight done. So at this point you might be wondering why would you kill Raksha? Well, for many of you, among other things, you probably need to kill Raksha simply to get the Reaper crew bonus back. But aside from that, Raksha has many, many, many valuable drops. Raksha can drop the Laceration and the Blast Diffusion boots, which already have existed before Raksha, but also a new ranged boots called the Fleeting Boots, which allow you to rapid fire while moving. 
There's also the Shadow Spike, the Greater Ricochet Ability Codex, which makes Ricochet one of the best possible abilities in the game, the Greater Chain Ability Codex, which also strengthens Chain, the Divert Ability Codex, which is like a resonance, except instead of healing you, you get more Adrenaline, and the Broken Shackle, which is the pet. The Greater Ricochet Ability Codex is actually right now worth more than a billion gold, and the Fleeting Boots are worth more than 400 million gold. So many of these drops can actually become quite valuable if you get them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you all learned something, and hopefully some of you may be encouraged to try doing the boss for the first time. It took me more than 70 or 80 attempts simply to start getting my first kills, but I did finally use the method that I described in this video to get between 10 and 15 minute kills, which I know are not the fastest, but to me they're the most safe and reliable way to do it, for the moment. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comments down below. Be sure to leave a like on the video, comment on the video as well, and then subscribe to the channel. I see you all next time on the next video. Have a good one. Bye.